Welcome to Lesson 13C, Boundary Layer Displacement Thickness. In this lesson, I'll define displacement thickness and discuss its significance. I'll briefly introduce momentum thickness, and I'll do two example problems. First, a definition of displacement thickness. We use the symbol delta star to indicate displacement thickness. Delta star is defined as the distance that a streamline just outside the boundary layer is deflected away from the wall or normal to the wall because of the boundary layer. I show here flow over a flat plate with a greatly exaggerated boundary layer in the y direction for illustrative purposes. I also draw several streamlines. From this definition, we look at a streamline outside the boundary layer and we see that it's deflected up. Why is it deflected? Well, there are actually two components of velocity, u and v. v is very small compared to u, but it's not zero. So in the boundary layer, the resultant velocity v is tilted upward, as we see in these streamlines. This occurs through the boundary layer and above the boundary layer. And displacement thickness is this distance at which a streamline outside of the boundary layer deflects up. As we move down the plate, the speed at some y location decreases, and therefore these streamlines move apart, reflecting that there's less flow rate between the streamlines. Notice how this streamline is close to the wall here, but it is farther from the wall here. Between these two streamlines, there's a constant volume flow rate. Since the boundary layer is not carrying as much flow close to the wall, the streamline must diverge. I make a note here, since this is often confusing for students, neither delta nor delta star are streamlines. You can see that the streamlines cross this boundary that we drew as delta. If we draw delta star inside the boundary layer, the streamlines also cross that boundary as well. The net effect due to conservation of mass is that these streamlines tilt upward. For any boundary layer, it turns out that delta star is given by this integral. Integral from 0 to infinity, 1 minus u over capital U dy. We use infinity because once you get up above delta, there's really no change. And so this term contributes nothing to the integral. For the Blasius profile, laminar flat plate, we write delta star over x non-dimensionally as 1.72 over the square root of x. Notice that this equation is of the same form as delta, but with a different constant, in fact a smaller constant, since delta star is smaller than delta at a given x. Here's an alternate definition of delta star. Delta star is the imaginary increase in wall thickness seen by the outer flow due to the presence of the boundary layer. In other words, the outer flow feels like the wall is thicker than it actually is. I sketch the actual wall case here and the apparent wall case here. This is the same as we had above, but I plot both delta star and delta for this boundary layer. But delta star causes the outer flow to feel like this wall is thicker. If I pretend I have a thicker wall, my irritational outer flow outside the boundary layer is no longer uniform like it is out here because of this thicker wall. So this is the actual case with a boundary layer put this same boundary layer in dashed lines because we're dealing now with a case without a boundary layer, just an irrotational outer flow with this apparent wall. The outer flow has to increase speed somewhat since this wall is growing in thickness. Here's a practical application of displacement thickness, namely in wind tunnel design. Again, the boundary layer is greatly exaggerated in these drawings for illustrative purposes. Actual boundary layers are quite thin. Again, I show the actual case and the apparent case, this is viscous, this is irrotational. We have an irrotational core flow, and because of displacement thickness, the irrotational flow in the middle must accelerate. Notice that speed is increasing down the middle of the wind tunnel test section. In terms of the apparent wall, this blue region is delta star, and the irrotational core of the wind tunnel feels as though the walls are converging in the wind tunnel because of the displacement effect. Again, we pretend that we have this wall at delta star instead of the actual wall. Since that wall is converging, again, the irritational flow inside the core must accelerate. In either case, irritational core flow u goes up as x goes up, so u of x is not a constant due to the displacement thickness. This has implications in a wind tunnel. Suppose we're looking at flow in the wake of some body in the wind tunnel. We would like to study this wake with the wind tunnel that has a constant speed from the beginning to the end of the test section, but this speed is increasing. 
so our awake analysis would be faulty. How do we avoid this effect? In other words, how do we keep u of x constant? One thing we can do is diverge out the wall. In other words, tilt the wall outward to make it slightly diverging to account for this displacement effect. I illustrate that here. Here's the actual wall, and here's the apparent wall case with an irritational flow as previously, except now we modify the test section wall so that it diverges the same amount as delta star. And the divergence depends on x, of course, since delta star is increasing with x. Here's the actual flow with that modified test section wall. And here's the irrotational flow for that same case. Now for either case, u of x is constant equal u. Again, if you pretend that the displacement thickness acts like a thicker wall, it makes sense to diverge the walls in order to keep this irrotational inner core flow constant speed. Now I can analyze my wake and not worry about increasing wind tunnel test section speed. One comment here, I actually did this with a real wind tunnel that I built. I was studying the far wakes of bodies like cylinders, and so I diverged the tunnel walls slightly to account for displacement effects. When I measured the speed here and here and here, it was identical to within the accuracy of my velocity measurement equipment. Let's do some example problems. This is the same example problem we had in the previous lesson where Craig is driving home with this 4 by 8 sheet of plywood on his roof rack. Previously, we calculated Reynolds number at the end or trailing edge of this plate, and we calculated delta, the boundary layer thickness, at the end of the plate. Now we're asked to calculate delta star, the boundary layer displacement thickness, at x equal l. We use the equation from above and apply it at x equal l. So this is our displacement thickness in variable form. We plug in the numbers, l, and Reynolds number and convert to millimeters and we get delta star equal 2.64 millimeters. Notice that this is less than delta by about a factor of three. We also commented in the previous lesson that this Reynolds number is too high for laminar flow. In the next lesson we'll repeat these kind of calculations but for turbulent flow. Let's do another example. This one involves a wind tunnel like I discussed. Professor Wakeflow studies the far wakes of objects using a small wind tunnel. For her experiment, she needs the free stream flow to remain constant with downstream distance. But due to displacement effects, the air speed increases downstream as we discussed. So she decides to expand the cross-sectional area of the test section as we discussed above. Here are some values of air density, kinematic viscosity, test section speed, length of the test section, the width of the test section, and the height of the test section. Professor Wakeflow decides to tilt only the bottom wall of the wind tunnel. We are to calculate how much she should increase the test section height at the end of the test section. Let's call the original height H0, and she tilts the bottom wall. We'll call this height HL, the height of the test section at x equal L. In this case, we keep W constant. At x equals 0, the cross-sectional area is W times H0. At x equal L, A equal W times HL our modified height. Looking upstream at location x equal l, the end of the test section, there is a boundary layer along each wall that has grown, and the important parameter here is delta star, which we assume is the same all around the perimeter of the test section. The dimensions are h0 and w. As we discussed, the displacement thickness acts like a thicker wall, so the effective cross-sectional area is the original area minus the displacement thickness effects. So it's WH0 minus 2 delta star W, since there's displacement effects on both the top and the bottom, minus 2 delta star H0, since we're accounting for both sidewalls as well. To counteract this displacement effect, we tilt the bottom wall. To be more precise, it's not a straight line, but rather it tilts according to delta star and according to this equation. To make the useful area equal the original area, we must add back this lost area due to displacement effects. The new cross-sectional area at L is thus the original cross-sectional area plus 2 delta star W plus H naught where I combined these two terms and added them back into the new area. In our cross-sectional view, this height is HL and we account for all four walls by expanding the lower wall to height HL. So this new expanded area is WHL. 
Finally, we can solve for HL by dividing by width W. This is our answer in variables. When we plug in the numbers, we get 0 0.41819 meters, and H has increased by 6.19 millimeters. This is the difference in height between the beginning and the end of the test section to make U of X approximately constant. I didn't show all the math, but for this problem, REL was 2.187 times 10 to the 5, from which delta star is 1.876 millimeters. This is the value I plugged into this equation to generate our answer. I note that this Reynolds number is kind of borderline between laminar and turbulent. We'll repeat this problem in the next lesson when we talk about turbulent boundary layers. Finally, I talked briefly about momentum thickness, which is given the Greek symbol theta. Delta star deals with conservation of mass, whereas theta deals with the linear momentum equation. Again, I won't derive it. You can look at the textbook for details. Turns out that theta is similar to delta star, except for this extra u over capital U in the integral. For a flat plate laminar boundary layer, it turns out that theta over x is 0 0.664 over the square root of Rex. This equation is the same form as delta and as delta star, except with a different constant. It turns out that theta is less than delta star, which is in turn less than delta. For example, for our 4 by 8 sheet of plywood, delta was 7.55 millimeters, delta star was 2.64 millimeters, and theta is only 1.02 millimeters. I won't do any examples with theta, but you can look at the textbook for examples of how theta is used in some problems. In a future lesson, we'll compare these same values for a turbulent boundary layer at the same Reynolds number. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.